What's up my friends, welcome back. You're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and in this video, I'm letting you in on my secrets to leveling up your screen flow footage in Final Cut Pro. You're really gonna find this video valuable if you edit any kind of screen capture video. Now, roll that intro. <laughs> As always, this video is unsponsored and free, so if you do enjoy it or if you find it helpful, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. That, that is the best way to support the channel. Anyway, enough of this waffle, let's dive in. So there are three things to focus on when ascending your screen flow footage from ordinary to engaging. Number one is movement to draw the eye and simplify things for the viewer. Number two is any visual aids like added text, arrows, underlines, circles. And number three is timing so that it feels real time but still stays snappy. I will go through these three things in detail, but first let me show you my method for capturing and then editing screen flow footage. So the program I use to do my screen flows is simply Apple QuickTime. I use it because it works and it's free. Simply right click on the icon and select new screen recording. I make sure that the screen flow is not recording any kind of audio and that's only because I want to do that after. I'll then go ahead and maximize the screen and do whatever I need to do. Once I finish that, saved it and then imported it into my project, I'll do my dialogue over the top and the way to do that is to come up to the menus, select window and then come down to where it says record voiceover, which will open up the record voiceover window. So there we have the basics of it, but really watch on because the key is the secret source that I'm going to reveal to you now. My first tip is to focus on keyframing movement in your clips. I think this is super important for directing your viewer's attention and also isolating certain elements you want to highlight on screen. I think this is crucial when so much content is now consumed on devices with small screens. Think about it. If you're doing a screen flow from, say, an Apple 27-inch iMac like this one, how on earth can you expect people to see what's going on from a 6-inch iPhone screen? Let me show you how I do it. This is going to feel a little bit like Inception because I'm going to show you how I keyframed the movement in that last example where I demonstrated opening up the record voiceover box. So we do have a screen flow within the screen flow within a screen flow, but it's all going to make sense. So in the screen flow, I say to go up to the menu to select window and then record voiceover. I then drag the record voiceover window to the middle of the screen just to demonstrate what it looks like. So to keyframe this, I'm going to position the playhead at the point where my mouse is starting to go up to the top of the screen, then open up the inspector and set keyframes for scale and position. Then I'm going to set my playhead to the point in which my mouse reaches that top menu and then I'm going to have it zoom in. And that's really just to show you where the mouse is going, what it's clicking on and of course what you should do. Next I'm going to click on the transform box so that I can drag my screen and position it as I want it. Remember we already set a position keyframe and because we've done that your clip will follow both the movement and the zoom motions that we've just done here. And here's what that example looked like in full screen. Or of course you can go back to about 1 minute 20 in this video. Next let me show you a before and after example of the huge impact that movement can have on your screen flow videos. This short clip was taken from my how to grade Ari Amira footage video. Starting with no movement whatsoever, here we go. Next I'm going to come up and I'm going to add an instance of colour wheels, that's the first place I start with almost every single grade. I'm also going to open up my video scopes and really the best option for seeing what's going on in our footage is to use waveforms. And here you can see the shot was exposed nice and brightly, you can see that lovely log footage just bunched in the middle with absolutely no compression going on in our highlights or shadows. All I'm going to do for now is just bring the exposure down just a tad to the clip itself. Next I'm going to come up and I'm going to add an instance of colour wheels, that's the first place I start with almost every single grade. I'm also going to open up my video scopes and really the best option for seeing what's going on in our footage is to use waveforms. And here you can see this shot was exposed nice and brightly, you can see that lovely log footage just bunched in the middle with absolutely no compression going on in our highlights or shadows. All I'm going to do for now is just bring the exposure down just a tad. My second tip is to maximize the visual aids in your clips, like added text or other animated elements. Let me show you a couple of examples. This first example is taken from my review video of Clear VoiceOver plugin, and in it I use arrows and circles. Check it out. Control panel, you can see we've got our controls 
Strength which dials in the intensity in which clear voiceover will remove those clashing frequencies. Mud removal which tames those lower mid frequencies. Bass boost which obviously boosts bass if your music needs it. And then you can tailor the output gain to whatever it needs to be. But before you do any of that, you need to hit the clear voiceover button, which instantly gets to work in removing the problem frequencies. And then later in that video, I used text over the top with more arrows. I didn't do voiceover over this bit because there was music playing, so I didn't want to interrupt that. Any of the purple animations you can see here are from Pixel Film Studios and the plugin's called Pro Point Hand Drawn. And I also use things like scribbles and underlines, anything to make it more visually appealing. Our third and final measure for making sure your screen flows are attention grabbing and fun to watch is to pay special attention to the timing and pace of your clips. I already mentioned that I do my screen flow first and then I'll follow with my voiceover afterwards. And this is key because I'll be chopping out any unnecessary bits of the clip or I'll be slowing things down according to what I say. So in essence, my audio sets the pace for my video. Let me show you what I mean. So take a look at this composite screen flow clip. This is taken from my M Callout Simple 2 review. And as you can see, the clip starts at 8.15 and finishes at 8.38. So it's roughly 23 seconds long. However, when I copy a section of it and then paste it back into my timeline and then extend the clip to see its full length, you can see the full clip was actually three minutes long. And that's just because I wanted to collect all the footage I needed and then I could edit it down later. Let me show you what it looked like in the end, bearing in mind I've done lots of manipulation to the timing in this clip to match what I want to say. Let me show you a really good example. Instinctively, when I first started using M callouts, I would make the tracking box smaller and I would position it just over my eye. My thought process was, well, it's a really high contrast area that it should be able to track no problem at all. However, as soon as you start tracking and you realize you have to deal with blinking, my head turning, that kind of thing, admittedly here I'm doing. This kind of thing is really easy in Final Cut because it has some really simple to use tools. The tools I use are just on the left hand side, just above your timeline. And of course we can slow things down, not one I use very often because of course you have to take into account frame rate. And we can also speed things up, which is one that I use a lot of the time. Sometimes with screen flows, it's better just to speed up the footage and just give a brief overview of what's going on rather than talking about everything in detail when you don't need to. And then we come to the one that I use the most, which is hold. And this is incredibly useful. It's the reason why I don't use the slow function, because if you need more time whilst explaining what's going on on a screen flow, you can just pause it and it doesn't look weird because you're looking at someone's screen. The last thing I wanna show you is the custom function. And that's where you can basically choose how fast or slow your footage ends up being. And it's useful if you need a clip to be exactly a certain length. Say you need it to be 8,000 times faster, well, you can do it. There are also three things that I would recommend never doing whilst capturing screen flow, if you can help it. Firstly, never capture screen flow in windowed mode so that the world can see little glimpses of what your desktop looks like. I see this all the time on YouTube and it just doesn't make sense. So hit that maximize button, hide any clutter that's on your desktop and keep it looking clean and more importantly, more private. Secondly, I would really recommend not doing your screen flow and your dialogue at the same time, unless you're really good at it. You've already seen my method where I do them separately, and that's the technique I recommend. I just find that doing them separately lets you concentrate on one thing at a time, and it almost always yields far better results. Lastly, thirdly, I would really recommend not leaving your screen flow clips as really long static clips unless they absolutely have to be. The reason I say this is because they tend to be a little boring and definitely not as engaging as they could be. The way I see it is this, your viewers time is precious so don't give them any reason to want to skip ahead. Those are my tips, please let me know if you found them helpful in the comments and let's load them up with any other tips that you guys have. I'm hoping we'll have a treasure trove of knowledge down there and we can all continue to learn. Anyway, that's it, I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot a better video. See you guys. I'm bad at this whole thing. This is because it carries me.